what's up and welcome back. So unfortunately, I waited for the hottest time of the day to do this, but you know, we're still gonna get it done. I'm gonna show you guys a cheap and quick way to stake up some of your tomato plants and also how to kind of trim them up if you're unsure how to do that. Trimming up our tomato plants is very important, very beneficial, whether we're talking about suckers or just those lower leaves, but we'll get into that later. But let me show you what I recommend using for a quick way to stake your tomatoes. There are a million ways you can stake your tomatoes. You can do string trellising, cage trellising, weave, tons of different ways. But if you happen to have any old pieces of wood lying around, these are just about one inch, I believe, and they were already pre-cut from another project. So leftover wood is best, but also if you have to go buy wood for this, using super cheap one inch pieces of wood isn't too expensive. And time-wise, it's a lot easier than setting up a weave trellis or something like that, so. Now you can go as tall as you would like. Obviously, it depends on your type of tomato. So I mostly have Romas and a couple different varieties in there. So I don't need to worry about anything too tall, especially for the Romas, although they can still get very tall. All we're going to do is stake these in the ground right behind the main stem of your tomato plant. The other thing you're going to need is some type of string. So usually I just use twine, but I forgot I actually had this. I forget what it's called, but it has that thin piece of metal and then it's just coated in this waxy plasticky stuff. It doesn't tie too tight and you can easily bend it. That's the key thing here. You don't want to suffocate the stems of your plants by tying something super tight. So whatever you use, just keep that in mind. Now it is a little crammed in here, but we're gonna make it work. So we're gonna stake up this guy first. We have the main stem right here and I'm just gonna put my post right behind it. I'm gonna dig a little bit out to make it easier and then just hammer the rest in. Hey, now's that time. You see that little smiley face in the corner? That's the subscribe button. If you feel like it, subscribe, watch all my videos. If you don't, then that's fine. Let's move on. Obviously the deeper you dig, the more sturdy it will be. Take some of our twine or whatever you are using and attach the main stem to your post as well as any of the thicker stems that will definitely need help or encouragement to climb up. This is definitely something I recommend doing when your plants are smaller. It's a lot easier, but you know, you don't always get to it, so. But I definitely recommend the sooner the better for sure. So that's it. I'm going to do the rest and then I will go over quick pruning, what's best to do for your tomatoes or what I prefer to do at least. So I'll be back. So I have this guy trellised up and now it's time to prune a little bit. So before I even get into the discussion of whether or not to prune your suckers, we don't want any of this foliage down here. All the leaves touching the bed, we want to cut off. The more leaves you leave down here touching your bed, you increase your chances of introducing pests and diseases to your plant. So you just want to cut off all that lower foliage. And honestly, your plant isn't going to be producing tomatoes so low. So we just want to cut all that off. And you really just want to allow your plant to breathe down here. I don't know if you could tell, but there were a little grouping of gnats down here. So this is definitely going to help allow the plant to breathe. No spots for pests to hide. And also now is the time to decide if I want to keep it on one single stem or let it bush out. Now this is aroma, so it is a bush variety, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut off this guy anyway. No flowers are producing, so I'm not too concerned about that. This Roma is actually the Roma 3 variety. It's a hybrid, I believe, and it is a little bit smaller, but we're still gonna go ahead and do the same thing. All this lower foliage down here, I am just going to snip off. Now it may look a lot smaller or less bushy, but that's totally fine. It's just going to encourage more growth upwards and it's going to fill out anyway. So don't be afraid to cut that lower foliage. Obviously don't chop off <laughs> all the foliage of your plant or else you're going to kill it. So suckers are inevitably going to grow on all your tomato plants. A good way to locate a sucker is to look for Y spots. So you have your main stem right here or stalk and then you have an offshoot and then you have this little guy growing right in this little Y or armpit area that is a sucker. Some people prefer to leave them, let their tomatoes run wild 
or you can prune them. So of course it's going to require more work in the garden if you want to take the time to prune your tomatoes. Now there are some pros or cons to both. If you don't want your tomatoes kind of looking like a jungle in your garden bed, then you should probably opt to prune most of the suckers or at least just some. If you do not care and you'd rather your tomatoes just do whatever you want and you don't believe it makes a difference, then you can totally just leave them. Last year, I definitely pruned almost all of my suckers and some people swear that by pruning these you will get a bigger bulk of tomatoes and some swear the opposite. So again, it's totally up to you. The one thing you can't argue is that there's evidence to prove both are beneficial. So I think this year I'm going to meet in the middle. I am going to prune some of my suckers just so my bed doesn't look insane and I can still kind of get in there when I need to, but I'm not going to be super strict and prune every single sucker that I see. I'm gonna see how that compares to last year because I don't really think I saw much benefit to last year of pruning every single sucker, but I also have way more tomatoes this year. So I guess we'll just kind of see how it goes. All right, so here is the end result. And yes, those cages look a little janky. That one's kind of uh, broken. I'm especially going to leave those ones for those only because they are cherry tomatoes. But this is what the rest looks like, all staked up. But now that I'm looking at it, these tomatoes will likely overgrow these posts rather quickly. So I'm not sure what I will do when we get to that point. But for now, I need to get them staked up on something so it does the trick. Yeah, so that's it. I hope this showed anyone that you don't have to have a super intense, intricate system to trellis your tomatoes. While it is fun to kind of set up a whole system, like I do think I'm going to try out a string trellis system next year. If you kind of ran out of time or you don't want to do that, then this is totally an easier way to do it. And it is way more affordable. I think so. These cages can also get kind of expensive. They range anywhere from five bucks and up. I don't think I've ever seen them cheaper than that unless you buy them used, which is totally an option as well. So yeah, I'm still kind of trying out what I prefer. I've also never grown Romas and those are bush varieties. So we'll see how well these posts hold up. That's also something to consider. Are you growing indeterminate or determinate? And that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're growing a bush variety that your tomato won't grow five, six feet if you allow it. I've definitely seen very tall Romas growing. So just kind of think about that, I guess. Also, a little aphid update. If you watched my last video, I'm still finding little tiny bits of aphids here and there on my pepper plants. And I also just found some on my borage. So that's a bummer but I'm going to go ahead and do another neem treatment. It definitely has helped. I've only done it twice, so that's my fault. With aphids, you definitely need to be very consistent in the beginning to make sure you get rid of the bulk of them. So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do right now, another neem oil treatment, and then I'm done for the day. As always, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and here, obviously. I appreciate any subscribe or comment, especially any advice. I'm still very much a noob when it comes to gardening. And wherever you live, I hope you have a great day or night. And that's it. Okay, bye.